been waiting 17 years for today. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're looking at the biggest bombshells from Investigation Discovery's four-part expose about Nickelodeon. Everyone knew it from New York to California. So who would we go to? Who could we possibly go to to complain about this? Amanda Bynes replaced Katrina Johnson. I had less and less and less and then no time with Dan. So the new favorite had arrived. I was out. From 1994 to 1997, Katrina Johnson was the youngest cast member of Nickelodeon's hit sketch comedy series, All That. During her time on the show, she was one of Dan Schneider's favorite young actors. And as she recalled in the docuseries, he even considered giving Johnson her own show. But as she got older, her appearance became an issue for the producers, particularly her weight, which they called attention to. I mean, that stuck with me. You can't be the fat one. Like, I still hear those words in my head to this day. With the addition of rising star Amanda Bynes in 1996, Johnson felt she was progressively sidelined by her former mentor, and she left the show a year later. Schneider would go on to be a significant figure in shaping Bynes' successful career, which some people, including her parents, saw as concerning. Maybe okay. at the time, people viewed it as comedy, but I think now some people are very uncomfortable with the application. Gender discrimination and a toxic work environment. In the late 90s, Nickelodeon producer Dan Schneider created a spin-off series to all that centered on Amanda Bynes. For Christy Stratton and Jenny Kilgan, the only women in the Amanda Show writer's room, it was a dream job. I had been in LA for seven years, and so it felt very satisfying that um, someone was gonna pay me to write comedy. However, there were red flags from the start. Stratton and Kilgan were made to share one salary between them, which isn't exactly legal. And along with other female staffers, they allegedly endured Schneider's misogynistic behavior, degrading jokes and harassment. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I'm not, like, I'm not proud of it, and I'm also like, ugh. Thinking about it now, yeah, it's like, oh boy, I, I just think of that poor girl and what she had to, you know, go through. Stratton was reportedly fired shortly before the end of season one. Kilgan quit just days into season two and filed a lawsuit against the production company for gender discrimination, ultimately settling out of court. The awful experience had a lasting impact on their careers in the television industry. I knew that this was the end of my career, so it had better be worth it. Like, it had better stop and to learn that it didn't stop, that it was all for nothing. Sexualizing the female casts. In the early 2020s, people revisiting Nickelodeon shows from their childhood have noticed that some content was undeniably bizarre, bordering on the explicit. Once I saw it again as an adult was when that memory came back. So I was like, oh, 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 wasn't funny. It still isn't funny to me. Old webisodes of Ariana Grande went viral, showing her victorious and salmon cat character Cat Valentine attempting to juice a potato, among other suggestive acts. Former employees also noted that Schneider was instrumental in choosing revealing clothing for the young cast and writing adult jokes into the episodes. It was clear that, that there was a permissibility around these sexualized jokes with children. It was par for the course. Like, strange things amuse Dan. And that was just one of the things he thought was funny. Prior to Quiet on Set, Zoe 101 cast member Alexa Nicholas had already been vocal about her discomfort working on the show. Although she doesn't appear in the docuseries, they reference Jeanette McCurdy's 2022 memoir, I'm Glad My Mom Died, in which she detailed the creator's verbal abuse and inappropriate interactions. He'll call people idiots, buffoons, stupid, dumb, sloppy, careless, and spineless. The creator knows how to make someone feel worthless. Inappropriate adult humor. I remember someone from Nickelodeon sitting with us and saying like, oh, does this mean, you know, this dirty thing? And Dan was like, no, why would you think that's like tainted, like you've tainted something? And they were like, okay. Kids programming tends to have some jokes and references for the parents, but Dan Schneider shows like All That and The Amanda Show often crossed a line. From character names with slang terms to costumes with phallic imagery, it was clear to some people behind the scenes what the writers were alluding to. Wait, why is this in the show? What is what is the joke here exactly? There's this weird element of like, they all were able to like pull a fast one and get away with it. 
and that's like a part of the joke. Crew members and parents would notice questionable jokes and sexual innuendo, but the environment made it difficult to express these concerns, especially to Schneider. And as former cast members recall in the docuseries, they were often uncomfortable with the material, even if they didn't know exactly what the innuendos meant. I'm just looking back at it, it's just very strange. Frankly, it was just uncomfortable. Traumatizing on-air dares. Nickelodeon's on-air dare segment was essentially fear factor for kids, challenging the young actors to endure gross and scary dares on camera. All that cast members Kyle Sullivan and Brian Christopher Hearn recounted moments on the show that made them extremely uncomfortable for themselves and their castmates. Those were particularly traumatic, and they were sort of designed to be. The whole idea was that you would have to do something scary on camera, and they got pretty scary. Hearn had one particularly awful challenge of getting covered in peanut butter and laying down as multiple dogs licked it off of him on stage. In the video clip from the segment, he clearly says that he doesn't like it. I don't like this. <laughs> I feel gross. Sullivan pointed out just how torturous it could be, with challenges that involved worms, dead fish, and scorpions. Young viewers would likely see this as funny, but for the actual participants, it was anything but. I think that people kind of just look at us and go, you made some money, so what are you complaining about? And yeah, we collect our money, sure, but at what cost? Racist sketches starring black child actors. My time on Nickelodeon played a big part in how I dealt and still deal with racial issues. With shows such as Keenan and Kel, Nickelodeon always seemed to value and encourage diversity. But in the docuseries, all that stars Giovanni Samuels and Brian Christopher Hearn said that compared to their white castmates, they felt, quote, overlooked. I understood the magnitude of being the token black girl, but I didn't realize how significant that was until years later. Hearn recalled a hurtful incident when a strange character required him to wear a bodysuit, and someone offensively joked about the skin tone color it should be. But fearing repercussions, he didn't say anything back. Whoever was doing my makeup at the time was kind of like, hand on my shoulder, like, it's gonna be okay, like, don't worry about that he just said. Samuels and Hearn also occasionally had to play into racial stereotypes. Hearn's mother, Tracy, discussed a sketch that she viewed as racist, one where her son pretended to sell cookies but believed it was made to seem like he was really selling illegal substances. Jason Handy Allegations As a production assistant on Nickelodeon shows All That and The Amanda Show, Jason Handy was a familiar face to young actors and their parents. Speaking in the docuseries, MJ details how her daughter Brandy booked a background role in one episode and began corresponding with Handy via email. She let me read it, and it was a very innocent email. It just talked about the shows that he had been working on. But what she thought was seemingly harmless progressed into him sending her an explicit photo. And while MJ didn't go to the police herself, Handy was finally arrested in April 2003 and charged with multiple felony counts involving inappropriate acts and material. Keep your trust in God and don't forget me. You and all the kids are why I work for free half the week. I love you, Jason. He pled no contest and received a six-year sentence. Shockingly, he wasn't the only convicted predator employed by Nickelodeon. Registered sex offender Ezel Channel, another Nickelodeon employee, was arrested in 2005. When you look at having multiple child predators who worked at Nickelodeon, it raises some confusing questions on who to hold accountable. Brian Peck's connection to John Wayne Gacy. Hi, I'm not just Pickle Boy, but I'm also a trained professional who works here on the set of all that. You can tell by my very important looking headset. Like Jason Handy, Brian Peck was well known at Nickelodeon, though the acting and dialogue coach was much more involved and even appeared on screen at times. Kyle Sullivan recalled a get-together he attended at Peck's home where he found a weird portrait of a clown. Brian got very excited when I asked him about it. He flipped the thing around and on the back it said, to Brian, I hope you enjoy the painting. Best wishes, your friend, John Wayne Gacy. He learned that the man had a disturbing, quote, pen pal relationship with John Wayne Gacy, a convicted serial killer who targeted young men. Even at his age, Sullivan knew this was strange. However, he alleged that other guests, including adults and parents, also saw Peck's collection of letters and art from Gacy. In his nightstand next to his bed, and he like pulls them out and starts showing them to me. Your instinct is to give someone the benefit of the doubt if you've known them for that long, even in the face of like 
this really bad sign. Drake Bell was John Doe. Have you ever told your story publicly before? I have never told my story publicly. Quiet On Set centered its third episode on Drake Bell, former star of The Amanda Show and Drake and Josh. For the first time, the actor-musician detailed the alleged abuse he suffered at the hands of Brian Peck as a young actor. You know, anytime I would have an audition or anytime I needed to work on dialogue or anything, I somehow ended up back at Brian's house. And it just got worse and worse and worse. The acting and dialogue coach became a constant presence, managing to turn Bell and others against his father, who was his manager. Peck was arrested just months after Jason Handy in 2003. Due to his age at the time, Bell's name was kept hidden and he was referred to as John Doe, something very few people knew until now. Fortunately, there was no therapy and was left to my own devices, which at that age probably isn't the best thing. Peck's famous supporters. Drake Bell was in attendance at the day of the sentencing for Brian Peck in October 2004. Though he was relieved his tormentor was finally caught, Bell was shocked to see the amount of support he received from notable people in the industry. His entire side of the courtroom was full. Full. There were definitely some recognizable faces on that side of the room. These included Growing Pains cast members Alan Thicke and Joanna Kearns, the Amanda Show crew members Rich and Beth Carell, along with actors James Marsden and Taryn Killam. In 2024, Boy Meets World stars Will Friedle and Ryder Strong claimed their letters were based on misinformation. You know, he, he had us, had Ryder and I write letters of support to the judge. And these are things we did. And, and again, we did them because we were then lied to. We weren't told the whole story. But it doesn't change the fact that we did it. Peck pled no contest, was sentenced to 16 months in prison, and was required to register as a sex offender. Still, he went on to work in Hollywood, even briefly on Disney Channel's The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. There are not enough protections in place to keep even convicted sexual predators off of kids' TV shows. Did you watch Quiet on Set? Let us know in the comments below. This is a house of horrors. No kidding, house of horrors.